Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at a complex part that I milled recently. We'll walk through all the operations and fix string of that on the Shapoko HDM. Stick around. It, now, it's been a couple weeks since the last video. I had an anniversary, had a birthday, took some time off to reset and reflect. And at the same time, just use the tools in the shop. And through that process, I milled some parts for some projects, which ended up being more complex than I expected. I thought I'd share that process with you today uh, because I learned a few things and maybe that'll be useful for others uh, getting familiar with machine capabilities and uh, the fixture plate uh, options and alternatives that allow you to fixture and machine um, some unique parts. This is one of the more complex and unique multi-operation parts that I've done. And we're going to walk through that. And to do that, we'll step into Fusion 360 and talk more about the project. Okay, over in Fusion 360, uh, we're looking at this part. And so to give you your bearings, this is a custom enclosure for a small modular camera setup. If we uh, do a cross-section analysis here, you see this enclosure is designed to allow um, multiple angles on the camera. And we can drive that joint show you uh, it has 17 degrees of freedom to adjust the angle of the camera as well as on the back side it can be rotated up to 45 degrees and so there's two parts to this assembly there's the main pocket which is what I've referred to as this top piece with the nose and then there's the rear back which is basically the the pivot mount and then there's a pivot which connects to this camera module and that's about it there's a few uh, pieces of hardware m3 there's a slot here for the wiring to connect to the camera in its different orientations aside from that it's pretty straightforward there's not a lot of complexity to this uh, these parts that need to be milled um, but it is a little tricky in regards to the sequence and the, the precision of the uh, the ledges on the inside of this nose section which is where a uh, one one millimeter uh, sapphire lens gets compression fit into the face there these two holes allow this pocket um, to be mounted within the environment that it's installed then on the back side um, this this hole in the middle is what tightens down the pivot mount um, which holds the camera module and then there's a couple m3s up here if we start to remove some of the stuff, I'll give you a better idea. Let's uh, get rid of the pivot mount at first. And you can see down inside here, we'll also hide the camera and the pivot because uh, really this is the component that will be milled. So when I was coming, uh, you know, developing a strategy on how to, how to mill this, um, I haven't done a lot of perfectly symmetrical round objects um, that are difficult to index that are multi-sided. So for me, that was a little challenging. And so uh, with the new milling platform and ModVice setup and installation I have on the HDM, I was going to leverage that, obviously. And the first thought uh, that came to mind was to leverage uh, SoftJaws and the ModVice capabilities. So if we look at that, um, these parts will be milled out of uh, raw stock. And so if we look at the operation, I've created models that represent the stock that they'll be milled from. There's a lot of excess. This could have been done a lot more efficiently with a smaller piece of material. But in this case, we didn't have all the dimensions or the final requirements or design before ordering the material. There was a, a longer lead time than I wanted. So we ended up going with larger stock um, to buffer for any change that occurred. Now, um, I probably could have saw this down a little bit uh, to save some milling time. I don't have the tools to do that in my shop here, uh, and so I just ended up milling it down uh, directly from that. Fortunately, this is a short run. There's only a few of these that need to be made, you know, have to do for now. So that said, we've got this large chunk of cast aluminum here that we're going to mill this part out of. And so the first operation will just be using the double-sided uh, reversible jaw inserts. Uh, that's what we have here, and I'm using the serrated edge on the stock size to get a really good hold on that just clamping on the edge of that as a toe clamp there basically um, <clears throat> several operations performed there and then the thought is with the first operation complete which would be this entire pocket cavity and then material removal on the outside we'll flip it over and do uh, 
implement a soft draw strategy. For that, let's hide the pocket here and we'll see that the soft jaws will be milled to index off of those features on the inside of the camera pocket. So if I hide this, you'll see that these features will be milled to spec on the flip and then those will be leveraged in the soft jaws for the secondary operations that are performed on this surface. That'll be removing the top hat that wasn't milled and then finish milling this surface, uh, the round over and the offset down here for the sapphire lens to be seated into. So that's the plan. Uh, obviously uh, we're using soft jaws and this is a round uh, part here and will be milled to finish uh, on the flip. And so I plan to index off of the soft jaw corner here. Uh, and then all, all of these operations will be performed from that. So if we want to see what that second operation stock will look like, I've modeled that as well. You kind of get a sense it's got this top hat or it looks like a graduation cap. Uh, and then it indexes down into um, the soft jaws as you would expect. All right, with that, let's step over into the manufacturing environment and look at all the specific operations that went into each step. Okay, in the first operation orientation, uh, this looks a little complicated, but don't worry, it's pretty straightforward. We've got our setups defined in two operations. So the camera pocket, which is operation one. For that, let's generate all these real quick. All right, initially get the surface down to spec. I used a face mill and this was ran pretty easily at 16,000 RPMs, 40 inches per minute using a one inch uh, diameter indexable face mill. And that ran really smooth and left a perfect finish on the top. And I was good to go uh, with the face on that. We did a uh, 25 thousandths step downs. Next was to remove the bulk material from this, the top piece of this part. Uh, and this was using an aluminum shredder bit, which is a three flute flat end mill. This was ran at 24,000 RPMs, 125 inches per minute. Step down was 200 thousandths of an inch. This thing cleared out the material in around 11 minutes, really fast and just tore through it. Doesn't leave the, the best finish, but because of the tolerance we have on that operation and we left 20 thou for cleaning up, um, we, we expected that. <laughs> Next I ran a contour. This contour was really just to clean up the face and that was using a 3 8 inch flat uh, finishing end mill. This was also ran at 20,000 RPMs at 100 inches per minute. Like I said, half inch step down. This thing was, uh, you know, throwing off large chips and leaving a, a really nice finish. Probably could have went slower uh, and maybe taken less off at a time, uh, but you know, it worked out great. And this operation only took about 30 seconds. So it took more time to set up, swap it out, tool length offset, and run the job than it did to actually surfacing on the sidewalls. Next, I cleaned up all the flat areas using a Kodiak cutting tools, three flute long nose flat end mill. And this was really just to reach down into those deep areas, ran this at 19,000 RPMs, 50 inches a minute, and just to knock out all those flats and bring those to tolerance. Next, I performed a ramp with a three flute ball end mill from Kodiak Tools as well. And this just um, radial movements. And uh, we also tapped in the location of those chamfers on the through holes there. And this was really just to clean up all those fillets. Before we get too far, electronic projects always start with good circuit designs, and for that I rely on Altium Designer. From simple to complex, if you haven't taken a chance to download a free copy and see what you're missing, 
I've put links in the description, and with Altium Designer, creating these complex projects is a piece of cake. Through your development, you'll be empowered to do your best work as you grow into its more advanced capabilities. The link in the description below will allow you a free trial version of the software so that you can check it out and see what Enterprise Class ECAD feels like. Now back to the overview. This was ran at 19,000 RPMs and 50 inches per minute. Clean up that 20 thou and finish it off. Finally, I did a contour on that nose portion where there's a large uh, fillet that needed to be cleaned up. Um, and for this, I had to complete the full um, cusp of that fillet to ensure that when I do the second operation, I didn't have any undercuts that were left that needed to be cleaned up. So this finishing pass just performs a contour to clean up that entire nose fillet and prepare it for the second operation. Once that was done, I did uh, some 2.5 millimeter uh, pilot holes that these will later be threaded to M3 to hold the pivot mount on. And finally, a little eighth inch four flute chamfer mill to break the edges on all this and put a nice clean surface. So that's operation one. Operation one went well. And in total, I think the calculated time was about 22 minutes. This ended up taking about 35 to 40 minutes because of the number of tool changes. I had seven tool changes in there to alternate back and forth between the, the right tools. So. You know, for now, it's got to be done manually. All right, so let's hide all of this Operation 1 activity, and we'll enable Operation 2 to show you what those steps look like. All right, here's Operation 2. Now, if we look at just the stock, you basically have the section that was milled out from the first operation. We have this top half that needs to be cleaned off and uh, profiled. Uh, and it's clamped together, as I mentioned, using soft jaws that were milled out with their, those profiles. If we hide this real quick, you can see those profiles. Everything was going to be indexed off the fixed corner soft jaw. And so all op operations for performed on OP2 would uh, be referencing from that point. Okay, that said, let's step down into those operations and we'll talk about it. All right, first step was to using the aluminum shredder uh, with the same settings as an op one which were uh, 24,000 rpms 125 inches per minute at uh, 200 thousandths step down and a 100 thousandth step over to clean up all that top material as well as to rough out the center nose of the part let's hide the stock and show you the actual part Next, we came in and ran that 3 8 inch flat finishing end mill to clean up the nose. Just a quick pass around that. Also running at the same feeds and speeds as the previous up one settings, which was 20 thousandths RPM, 100 inches per minute, to clean off that 20 thou that was left on the nose. Switching over to the flat end mill, we perform the same operations to clean up the flat surfaces, uh, quarter inch three flute uh, Kodiak cutting tools. This I believe was ran at 20,000 RPMs and 50 inches per minute. And that was just to clean the 20,000 off the tops. Next was the internal contour, which was ran a little slower. And that was to bring those into spec, remove and finish off those verticals which would be run at 19,000 RPMs, 60 inches per minute. This would also be responsible for milling out that finish pocket or the ledge for the sapphire lens that would be compression fit in there. This was ran at 19,000 RPMs at 30 inches per minute, just to make sure that this was, uh, you know, had a spring pass included and we got a really great finish because that sapphire being compression fit in there, it needed to be perfect. Finally, I rounded over this with a three flute Kodiak cutting tools ball end mill uh, to clean up that edge and drop the chamfer in on those through holes. And finally, drill through with that 2.5 millimeter bit to provide mounting holes for this into the pocket. That said, that concluded all of the operations on the face and then this part was complete and ready to be finished. So with this part complete and ready to be finished, there was one other part, which was the camera pivot mount. If we isolate that and look at it, this is really just a couple pocket cuts and contour cuts to get that profile for the pivot socket 
as well as the uh, entries for the uh, orientation adjustment and the wire pass through. So this was all milled from a four millimeter plate of aluminum uh, using, using uh, several operations to mill down and profile it correctly, flat end mills, three flute flat end mills, and three flute ball end mills. Uh, pretty straightforward. I won't go through the details on this and was relatively trivial in terms of milling this out. Now let's look at the finished parts. With the parts complete, the next step was to finish these. And as these are for photography, I coated them in a flat black powder coating. Both parts were powder coated and cured, and the resulting finish was excellent. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at this fairly complex multi-operational part that I milled on the HDM. It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of tool change using the soft jaws and the mod vices and the fixture plates and all that fun stuff. And I've learned a few things along the way. I'd love to hear your approach on how you'd, uh, what strategy you'd employ on indexing on these round parts and multi-sided operations. Uh, comment below for that. Um, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, you get notified on new videos being released. If you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up and all that fun stuff. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.